Good morning, my name is Hiroko. I work as a Japanese teacher、uh, living in Paris. And today I'm going to talk about my language learning experience learning English and French,、uh, having Japanese as a maternal language. So let's go. How I define myself as being fluent. So, I thought about the five stages of fluency. So, the first stage is、um, in my head, it's a zero level. So, you can order the food at the restaurant、uh, or maybe go to the post office and buy some, what do you call it, like a stamp? To post it to the family back home. That's a level zero. I think、um, if you can handle that situation fluently, then you can speak,、uh, you can say that you can speak the language fluently. That's a level zero. So, level one is whether you can talk about your own、um, on daily life, like what you did yesterday, what I did. What you will do today and what you will do tomorrow. So, it's if you could make a to do list or a simple journal with your feelings on it, like, oh, I'm, I felt happy today, or I felt sad today, I felt depressed,、uh, with a simple words, then that's a level one to me. So, level two is now you can get to explain things in detail. Um, you can explain how to cook something from step by step ways. And then,、um, maybe with a feelings, a little bit of feelings toward it. But because you're level two, you will need some、uh, translation side to write an email. Or if you、um, speak the language from morning to the evening, then you get drained and tired. That's a level two for me. And I was in that level when I first、um, started to go to a jewelry school to learn how to make a jewelry five days a week. And I had to speak French and understand French、um, to realize what I have to,、uh, to pro- help produce what I have to create.、Um, so that was my level two when I.、Um, Started jewelry school when I moved to France. I was in level one or level zero because I was able to order a restaurant, food at the restaurant, but I wasn't really comfortable、um, speaking French and I thought that I should improve more. So we were talking about、uh, my notion of fluency, and the level three fluency is be able to express yourself freely. Um, with your feelings, the deeper feelings. And if you don't have a correct vocabulary, maybe、uh, the person you speak or speaking to can share the ideas、um, the, or share the options. That's a level of three. And you can maybe start to read a book、uh, with a dictionary. And、uh, yeah, and people can listen to you. And people might start to say that you speak、uh, the language fluently. And、um, maybe, but there will be like a, what do you call it? Like a muscle overuse. And after three or four, four hours, you start to lose some vocabulary or something. That's a level three. And I think that's my French level right now. I could. Um, communicate in the daily life, but after three or four hours, then I started to feel sleepy and I started to、um, crave for the break. That's a level three. Level four is、um, you can read the novels or you can read a book or you can use the idiomatic、uh, expressions. And then people around you will say that、um, you are. Have you lived in that country, for example? So that's a level four. And level five is the,、um, the ultimate level of fluency for me.、Um, that was me when I was working in Tokyo.、Uh, that was already three years ago.、Um, I was able to speak English more fluently. And then because I was working in an international company, I, I was exposed to many accents. 
many expressions and I get to choose, I got to choose the expression that fit to my feelings. And then I don't, I don't feel like I'm a, I'm a foreigner, you know, working in、um, other offices in San Francisco, for example, when I went there for the business trip. So that was my level back then. <laughs> I think I, Uh, my English became really, really、uh, bad after I started to learn French. And because language is connected to your thought system and thinking system, it's really hard to get back to my original level of English. And I was so ashamed of that. But、um, moving on. So, why I started to tell you five levels of fluency、um, in my head? Because when you. When you set a goal that you want to speak the foreign language fluently, where do you want to be, right? Where do you want to be? I, well, I'm pretty ambitious in my own life. So I would love to go to the level five, the maximum level. Like you don't feel like a foreigner. You feel like you are, I don't know, American or French for me because I was speaking English or Australian or Canadian or British people. I don't know.、Um, that's a level five. I would love to have a level five. But to tell you the truth, my French level is level three. Like I could speak in the daily life. I could, well, speak with the neighborhoods, right? Neighbors.、Um, and I could survive here. And truth be told, I wasn't in much trouble. I mean, if, you, if I want to understand people's jokes, then I'm far from it. I need to ask them for the background why it's funny and what did they say in the punchline? Because, well, in every language, when you、um, hit the,、uh, the punchline, then you speed up the story, right? Because it, it's funnier and funnier until the end, right? So I don't really understand the joke, the local joke here. But other than that, if I should read some long doc,、uh, documents about the admin, administrations, I need to tap into the translation side and see、um, because it will, it's quicker, way quicker than thinking about my own head.、Um, and I don't have any problem with that. I mean, I would love to improve my French skill. So I will continue learning French. And I still don't really. Like my French, I mean, when I hear myself speak French, I feel like, oh my gosh, I speak like a, like a child, six year old or seven year old. And I don't get to shake that feeling. So, yes, I would love to improve that. But、uh, truth be told, even if I'm not satisfied with my French ability, I, if someone sa- tells me that I speak French fluently, I will. Tell them back, thank you. Thank you so much for saying that.、Um, and it's okay. I mean, so in my head, fluency depends on the,、um, the definition and where do you want to be. Like, if you just order food、um, in French fluently, then that's your fluency. I think I would say that you can speak French fluently because you're living and you're asking people for service, right? So,、um, the first thing I wanted to say is be confident because if you don't, if you're not confident, then you won't keep on studying that language. And that kind of lack of confidence, confidence drains you. And then if your energy is drained, then you're less motivated to study. You will be depressed and,、um, you will depress with yourself, honestly, because language,、um, ability connects to your, I mean, Learning ability and all that. So it's really easy to tap into your trauma and switch on the trauma. And then you keep on depressed for a very, very long time. That happened to me when I learned French and I hate it. That's why I stopped.、Um, I tried, oh, well, right now I switch off that kind of、um, sense of inferiority and try to move on little by little. Um, I will be better tomorrow than today, for example. So, this video is all about that like, def- define where you want to be and what do you want to do with the language. So, that's the,、um, the definition of fluency for me. 
And because I learn English and French, I will、uh, share with my own, share with you my own experience regarding English learning experience and French learning experience. So, English learning experience,、uh, jump to the conclusion, it was fantastic. I mean, I loved English、um, because I was listening to,、um, the, I think it, that was、uh, American pop rock music or maybe British pop rock music. My parents had a lot of CDs. Like Chicago's or Billy Joel's or Simon and Garfunkel's and all the pop songs and rock songs in 1970s or 80s, Duran Duran.、Um, I loved all of it. I listened to that, or、oh, Darion Hall. I listened to that、uh, when we drive to my grandparents' home in Tokyo. We were living in North. Um, so I listened to them eight hours or nine hours a drive. So that's. That's in my blood. I love this,、um, the English language because of the rhythm and I think a, a little bit of nostalgia. And also, when I, well, because I didn't really,、um, I couldn't get to see a lot of f o r e i g n e r back in the North Japan, I didn't really know that there were w o r l d outside of Japan where people speak another language and there's another culture and ways to live that was so. I don't know,、um, fascinating to me, to be honest. And then when my father asked me, well, actually, there are English learning program on radio. Will you want to, would you want to try that? Like the textbook only costs around five euros or something. And I would say yes. That was when I was 10. And then I learned、um, English for two years with the radio program. First year, I didn't really get it. But second year, Um, because the first year I didn't get it, my father said,、um, just keep on doing it, right? Just keep on listening to it. Just get used to the sound. And the second year, maybe you get to study on the grammar. And I stuck to that because I love the dialogue. I love the feeling of being able to speak some foreign language someday in my future. So the second year, I started to learn English. And the first wall was. Why do I have to put S when I start the subject with he or she? So that was the,、uh, the little wall that I have to, had to overcome.、Uh, luckily, I had a grandpa who was an English teacher and he was very patient. He explained to me, and at the end of the day, he had to say, Hiroko, just finish with your logics and just remember it because that's how the people back there speak. But if you want to have more explanations, I have a grammar book here that I use when I teach for the university students or high school students. So just ask me. So it was perfect. And then、um, I, was, I always got a better score at school for English because I loved it. I kept on listening to English music, I mean, American music or English music.、Um, and then until、um, when I got to university, I started to belong to the club called English Speaking Society. And there I got the chance to speak with other、um, university students in English. All of them are Japanese, but we spoke English in a discussion. And then I tried to do the output back there. And then after that, I was introduced to the, the activity to do the、um, tour guide for、um, the English speakers. So we didn't take any fees. We just said, we were a university student. We want to improve our English ability. Would you,、um, would you agree to do the one hour free tour with us? So, some people agreed with us and do the tour, and that there I brushed up my output. I brushed up my English. And then after that, I got a job. The first two years was different. I was a teacher for the cram school, we say, like a pre- preparatory school, maybe in French too, for the kids to prepare for the better school. So, I worked there for two years. I couldn't get to use English. That Gave me a frustration and I wanted to use English. In the second company, I got、uh, the job of a service desk, the help desk.、Um, and my, in, my task was 50% English, writing email or taking a call or 
um, guiding them how to use a tool, for example. And that was fantastic. I got to get, I got used to Indian English and Malaysian, Eng Malaysian, a Filipino English. Because when the Japanese kid always learn English, uh, American English, and we don't get to expose to other accents. So it was very cool. It was a real life, life experience for me because, well, in the real world, we have a lot of accents, right? So that was cool. And then after that, I keep on using English. But the last company before I moved to Paris was international company where the headquarters is in San Francisco. And that is when I exposed to the American English back then with the idiomatic expressions and slangs and all that or their working ethics, everything that I dreamed of. And, well, there was good thing and bad thing, of course. I mean, there's no perfect countries or perfect culture. I, expo I was exposed to the negative things and positive things about American culture. And then that, that opened my eyes for the reality. Um, I was sad and happy at the same time. And my English was... Uh, at the hype, you know, that's the the good experience of learning language. Love the language. Lot, did a good uh, amount of input um, first in my school days. I put a lot of expression in my head. And after that, I got to output them and then brush it up in during the club activities or work. And that worked perfectly. In, that was English. French, oh no, <laughs> oh no. I started learning French uh, when I was a high school student because I used to want it to be a pâtissier in in France. I mean, my mom told me when I wanted, when I told her that I wanted to be a pâtissier, she told me that I would have to work in France to be a better pâtissier. And then I switched on my motivation for learning French. And then I did the same thing. I listened to the radio program or TV program about learning French. And for the beginner, I get used to the sound. And then when I went to university, I chose French as a second language. Then uh, the suffer started uh, because the teacher focused on the conjugation of all the verbs and the tenses and all the grammatical points. Um, and I wasn't performing well and I got enough of it. I was like, no. French is not for me. And then after I started working, I told myself, well, didn't you want to be a pâtissier? And I started to learn again with a textbook. There were, there were, um, there was well organized, um, well, Japanese way, but well organized French exam. Um, what do you call it? Like a certified by Japanese government, right? So I studied for that. I passed a couple. And then I go to the language school to have a one-on-one -on -one or sometimes group chat in French. And um, so that was back then. And when I moved to France, I was like, oh, my goodness. I thought I could speak French, but no, no way. I mean, I could introduce myself a little bit and I order the food at the restaurant or I went to the market and buy things but I was so uncomfortable and people talk super fast and I couldn't really understand I went to the language school no nope, there's no improvement um I went to the jewelry school then because I needed to speak French I needed to understand French more my French level up to, uh, to the level of survival level. But then I, because I pushed myself to speak, I made a lot of, I think, mistakes. And then uh, my mistake, I don't know, the stuck in my head and I couldn't undo it. And then when I went to the language school for the second time, when I was uh, doing the internship at the Julie brand, oh my gosh, my language school teacher told me that, oh, you were so careless about the mistakes and you need to pay attention. You need to speak more slowly to avoid mistakes. If you will just slow down, if you just be careful, then you'll be fine. No, <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way, but the teacher don't really understand. Well, it was great to just review my French after one or two years, how my French is 
has evolved, looked evolved, but not really. Um, and that opened my eyes for my own French ability. Like, oh no, I was just surviving here. And then that pushed a lot of trauma because at jewelry school, I was told that I was really bad at detail oriented, um, operations. Um, I often made mistakes. I pushed myself too much and, um, and then they didn't show me how I can improve that. They always tell me to slow down. That's the thing. But slow down was not an option because when I slow down, nothing improves. Well, actually, for me, um, it's coming out of my experience. I mean, this is my comfortable speed. And if I slow down, then my head goes white and I don't know how what to do. So I was struggling about my French. And then after that, um, well, only current, only recently I started teaching Japanese. And um, because I use French uh, in my class, I get to improve my French. And I fa- luckily I found another teacher. And then that teacher was amazing. The, he's very, very logic, logical. And he has every explanation that I need. And he presents me with a lot of ex, uh, examples and that helped me a lot. And that motivates us a lot. Uh, that's, I think, that's the conclusion of today's video, I guess. Like, have people that support you or have people that understand your struggle and push your back, support your back. That's what I wanted to say. Well, I need to cut out <laughs> for now to um, teach Japanese to another student and I will come back. And now I'm back. So essentially, uh, what I wanted to do is a summary of what I wanted to say. So what I learned after I learned English and French, the, th- the, the core thing is you have to like the language or you have to like that country or the culture or what the language um, opens up for you, right? So for example, for my English case, I love the music. So and I love the music in the movie. And the rhythm of English or the image of me speaking English fluently. I love that. So that was super easy. Um, studying English wasn't a suffering experience for me. I enjoyed every bit of it. And I, I love the uh, progress that I made. Um, but for the French, because I was able to speak English, I didn't have any more motivation to learn French. I mean, I like the food, I like the food, of course, I like the food, I like the cake because I wanted to be a cake baker. Um, and then, yeah, I wanted the art, I wanted impressionists and all the uh, art, um, big name artists, I like their style, I and I like the history, it's super interesting, the revolution and all that. Um, but it wasn't, then it wasn't, necessarily become the motivation for me to learn French because I can always search for the English book for the information, right? Um, so you, you need some inner motivation, that necessity to learn the language because learning a language is a marathon. For the English, uh, it took 10 years for me to start speaking English because I began learning English at around the age of 10. And when I spoke fluently, that was when I was a university student uh, around 20 or something. So it was 10 years. And French, I started learning French around 16 or 15. And uh, when I sp- spoke uh, French fluently, that was when I become, when I moved here, that was when I was 32. So six well, I'm so bad at math. 16 years or 70 years of studying French. Well, as for the French, it's on and off. English, I studied it every day. I think it's like, well, it depends on the, uh, the period of my life. Um, back in Japan, the school days were, as you might guess, uh, it's really hard. Like you have to study a lot. You have to be you have to push yourself a lot to be in the better university or better high school or for some kids better junior high school or secondary school you say um so it depends on the season 
before the entrance exam, I studied English every every day for two hours or three hours. But before that, it's always right. It always like thirty minute of reviewing what I learned um, by the English radio program. So it depends on the season. So English, I learned. Well, the important thing is English. I learned every day uh, with my comfortable speed. I didn't push too much. Maybe that might be why it took me ten years to speak the for uh, the fluent English or the the fluent English that I want. Um, but well, French, I I study on and off. I took two year or three year break, and I suddenly restarted it. And after six months or one year, I gave up or something. So it was bumpy as for the French learning language learning. So in in it's sixteen years or seventy years of study. So um, it's a marathon, to be honest. Well, and it depends on people, right? Because if you if they are so passionate about language, if you want to concentrate on language learning. Just the language learning for your hobby, then you might progress a, a way faster than me. But for me, I'm interested in so many things. I love cooking, baking, sewing, um, making, and um, well, because I learned making jewelry. Making jewelry become one of the hobbies as well. Um, so language learning is one of my hobby. So I break down everyday life into chunks and. Um, study that might be why I, it took so many times but anyway anyway you like have to like the language and if you don't really if you're you're not passionate about that language but still you want to learn as for my french well as for uh, to use that language as a tool to live in that country or to for the work or something that's my french case you might want to have someone to study with you or as a teacher or friends. In my case, my boyfriend and I moved to France. So when I see my boyfriend's progress, it, it helped me motivate it um, because he was faster. He couldn't speak any French, and but he has to use it in his workplace. So his progress was way faster than mine, and that was mind blowing, and um, that encouraged me a lot to study more. And also, I found the better teacher these days, and um, and the um, what do you call it? The feeling of um, making a progress, or feeling of me being capable of progressing in French push my back a lot. So you need teacher or friends or family members or what, whoever, whoever, maybe your community, whoever uh, pushes your back, keep them in your life and um, keep studying with them so that you keep motivated and to like your process. Liking the process is the key because if you don't like it, you're going to stop. Like my French. <laughs> and that's the key. Love for the language or the support system. And if you decide to learn the language, start from the basics. If you get tired of it, don't stop. Don't stop inputting. And then if you get tired and you can select the phrase that you are likely to use, for example, I don't know why, but I found the expression be good at something is a very useful expression for me when I speak English. So that's why I learned memorizing my head. Okay, be good at something. And I do the puzzle in my head whenever I want to say someone is good at something or I'm good at something. I switch the words of something into something that he or she or I am good at. So um, remember this kind of idiomatic expressions that you are going to use when you speak that language and stick to it, stick to the input. And after you feel like, okay, I remember, I remembered everything, ask for the basics, no less than you got to find your teacher. I mean, one-to-one -one speaking company in Italki or Preply or other language exchange platforms um, because you eventually need it to speak speak to someone and need someone to modify your language. And then in the process of learning, I have a list, so I'm looking at this way. Um, during, in that, during that process, if 
you have something that you're passionate about, use it to um, use your language. For example, I loved karaoke. I loved American pop and UK pop. I sung a lot in high school days, university days, work days. And that makes me connected to international team of colleagues, right? And it was very good. Um, and I could get to sing so I could get to pronounce better, uh, find the uh, expressions that I want to use in a daily life. So I love sing, singing and I think singing a song contributes a lot to improve your language skill. Listening, uh, pronunciation, um, what do you call it, getting a lot of vocabularies, um, memorizing all the expressions in your head and to use it because you sing it, right? So, and I couldn't find the favorite songs in French. That's another story. <laughs> So, and on top of that, um, if you have activities that you definitely have to use that language to it, because um, that's the, that is the key. The necessity is the key. I was so bad at French, but when I joined French language, oh, well, Julie School, I needed to understand French better because if not, I couldn't do anything with a. Uh, with a metal plates or with the DIY looking hammers and the, uh, the, the saws or, uh, the compasses or needles and all that. I couldn't do anything if I couldn't understand French. So the necessity is a key. Ask for English for me in order to get out from my country, a boring country life and talk to other people or in order to, uh, listen to some, um, interviews of uh, rock star, pop star, or listen to some gossips <laughs> on YouTube. I loved, um, I loved the progress of um, my English skills because little by little, I was able to listen to what they say. And it's fascinating, um, the interview of my idols, you know. Well, I love Backstreet Boys, but um, after that, I love Foo Fighters and Linkin Park. Um, other other artists, I don't really remember. Go Green Days. Green Day, Simple Plan. Um, I listened to Westlife as well as a boy band. Other than that, I don't really remember right now. But anyway, you need a necessity. You need a necessity to push your language learning. So I think other polyglots or the people who love language learning will say, Sur be surrounded by language, that language. Have fun with the language and uh, have fun with your own progress as well. So that's my key. Well, at the end of the day, having fun is the uh, the greatest push to learn something, to make a progress. And don't stick to, don't stick to having a goal of speaking the perfect language because, you know, you don't, well, no matter how you are good at speaking a language, you won't speak it like a native language speaker because it's the simply the, um, the situation is different. The condition is different. How their brain is formed is different. So you can't be speaking like a native language, but how you be satisfied with your level. That's the important thing. If you can only speak the language to order the food at the restaurant or talk a little simple thing with your neighborhood, if that's okay, then that's okay. You're going to decide. You don't have to compare it with other speakers. That's comparison kills the joy, right? So don't compare. Um, you have your own speed. You have your own way of having fun. And yeah, and have someone or some community or some supporting system or something you like to keep on doing it. Just don't quit because if you quit it, you have to start it all over again because your brain's going to forget. That's my French. So <laughs> learn from my bad experience of learning French. Um, so that's my talk. I, I talked a lot. Um, that's my feeling toward the language. And I um, honestly want to help my students to be better at Japanese, have fun, and be comfortable speaking Japanese or be confident speaking Japanese. I know that it's a 
well, complicated language. We have three letter writing system. But anyway, if you stick on Romaji, that's fine, I think. Well, I, I'm creating a lot of enemies right now because I know that many Japanese speakers or teachers keep on telling you that you have to learn hiragana, katakana, kanji to be a better speaker. Well, yeah, it might be an advantage. But if you want to speak your daily life, what I did yesterday, what I will do tomorrow with only Romajan, that's fine, right? Well, the only weakness, weak point is that, well, you might slow down remembering your words because if you remember kanji, kanji is going to tell you, or the Chinese character is going to tell you the hint to decipher what the word means. So that might be an advantage, but then you might want to put a lot of effort of remembering the uh, the letters, it's really hard for Japanese kids as well. So, well, it totally depends on your situation. As for learning Japanese, I guess. So if you are comfortable learning Japanese with only the Romanji, then go for it. Just go for it. Just have fun. Um, don't listen to others because others are going to tell you the hot way. And if you don't want to go, then go, don't go, right? Um, that's what I feel. Well, because... The people don't tell you to learn Latin, to learn French or Italian, Spanish, right? Well, it might be better. It might be better if you know the Latin language, the, the overall system. It's very complicated, but maybe you might find a common um, grammar points to Italian or Spanish or French, and then it might help your study, but it's not directly helping you, right? That's the same. I mean, three types of letters in Japanese might help you. That's how we learn when we're a kid, the native speakers. That's what they do, but they suffer a lot. Remember, they suffer a lot as well when we're a kid. We learn three letters. We have wrote so many kanjis or hiraganas or katakana. We have been th so many tests. So if you feel like, oh, I love Japanese, but I'm so intimidated by three letters, don't do it. Keep on sticking with romaji. Keep on remembering the sound. And then when you feel like, Oh, well, I feel like I need to study hiragana and katakana anyway, then, then go ahead. But take your time. Don't rush it because it's going to be maybe too much. It's going to be too, I don't know, too intense. So if you are scared of three letters, don't do it at first. I would recommend you to listen to a lot of YouTube videos about learning Japanese or the, uh, the words, or maybe you can start using language app well the language app always based on hiragana and katakana that's a challenge but just um take a what do you call it like a just grab japanese as a big picture and listen to it uh, remember the words just as you heard and then if you feel like i can introduce well you can introduce yourself to someone or you can say oh it's hot today or cold today because japanese love talking about the weather then you find the teacher ask him or her whether they have to, I mean, what kind of progress they, you can make, right? Well, I would say keep on speaking it. Keep on speaking it. Keep on speaking what, what you want to speak. And then I think, well, to some extent, when you make a huge progress, I think you might feel like, oh, at this point, I'm ready to learn hiragana and katakana. That's absolutely fine. And there are some teachers say that you have to uh, at least write hiragana and katakana. That's not enough because we use a lot of kanjis. And hiragana and katakana, well, especially hiragana, it's just for connecting the kanjis. So if you learn hiragana, it won't serve you that much. You know, you have to go to kanji. That's what I feel. So... Whether you go to the long and winding road <laughs> to the complicated way of Japanese, or you can skip it, you can have a um, fun time speaking Japanese with Romaji and only that sound, your listening skill, then that's fine as well. You decide. Don't listen to others. I mean, I'm the others as well. <laughs> but if you, well, just follow your intu intuition as a longest learning because your brain won't accept it if you start to do something that you don't like. So be selfish <laughs> as for learning language. And if you feel like you're stuck, find a teacher or people who are better at it and ask them and just co and collect their opinions, absorb their opinion, ask in your head, 
Does that sound correct? Does that sound correct? Does their way do their does their well do their way sound ways sound correct to you? And if your heart tells you yes, then go for it. So that was my uh, little um, story sharing of well, my language learning. Thank you so much for listening to this video. I will, I think, cut out a little bit of a sentence to re-upload it for <laughs> easy listening because it's, this is a really long story. But thank you so much for listening. Have fun. Uh, be patient. Uh, listen to your heart. Be happy. And see you next time. Take care. Bye.